Hi everyone, nice to meet you. Um, I'm, I quite like starting with the poem in which I don't have to speak. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a poem which is an erasure of sorts. Um, it's not an erasure of the text, it's an erasure built entirely from existing film subtitles. Um, the film subtitles are mostly taken from films which themselves deal with the idea of memory. Um, so it's a sort of deja vu in return to these films and it's playing with the recur actually a line from Recur which is in the book, every memory search is also a hunt. In true Gallic fashion that's a hunt for a woman, a kind of like stalking backwards across time. So this is a kind of um, a text that's trying to draw attention to the slightly odd gendered aspect of this cigarette smoking French idea of memory. Um, <laughs> I won't give away all the films, but you might think about the woman for whom Ridder becomes the subject of a time loop experiment in uh, Je t'aime, Je t'aime, for whom the man journeys back to the still image of his own death in La Jete, and for whom X dreams of marrying bad. Um, so this is called Last Year. interested in, in what I read, that they're, they're kind of gathered around two themes in some ways, which is memory and translation, and the, the, the linking between memory and translation. So when we remember something, it's not exactly the same, we're somehow translated, so memory is a kind of a destabilized thing. So I'm interested in um, when in The Umbrellas of Sherbog, the female character says, I, I would have died for him, why am I not dead? These two logics could be true. You can truthfully say, I will remember you forever, but that can still cease to be the case. So um, this is from a series in which I translate and mistranslate um, songs about memory. Um, on Nubli um, Oviam, I'm just going to read one from it. And it's called uh, Chanson, and it's um, translations through different languages. 
No day shall erase you from the memory of time. It never forgets anything, cannot forget anything, is never forgotten anything. You get used to it, it departs, neither these nor those ships. Neither these trips that we capsize from landscapes, landscapes and faces in faces, neither these ports or casts or all these bars, neither these cockroach catcher places where the grey morning is expected. Neither cinema in his whiskey, neither this, nor anything in the world do know to make us forget, cannot make us forget, one half-remembered song, where never forgets anything, cannot forget anything, is never forgotten anything, you get used to remember. Neither these I love you or those loves, from grey, grey, crying, crying, neither the white one-night arm woman necklace for our boredom alley, where I have done a thousand songs of my regrets, neither this great bed places where my remorse have appointment, neither this big bed that I want certain days, or nothing in the world, do not know make us forget, cannot make us forget, it never forgets anything, cannot forget anything, it never forgets anything, you get used to it as it is. Um, I assume everybody knows the story of Rumpelstiltskin, the magical, the magical man of Rumpelstiltskin. This is a version of Rumpelstiltskin. Um, in fact, if you look up the, the origins of Rumpelstiltskin, the different language origins, every single name for Rumpelstiltskin in a different, different language version of Rumpelstiltskin etymologically means something different. So. Um, every point in this poem where you don't quite recognize the phrase, that would be, for instance, the Russian version of Rumpelstiltskin, that's what it directly means, or the Chinese version of the Rumpelstiltskin leg legend. So they're actually completely different names, which kind of undermines this idea that he has this one absolute magical name that can't be remembered. This is um, uh, Rumpelstilt. Don't you know nobody can love you or your name's best memory? A little rattle ghost or rumble shank. I think I've forgotten him. Everything was easier before I knew yours. By stilt or stalk or cruel amusement, every frumpy pigskin guessed your virtue. I think I've forgotten him. And down by the spinning heart, I drew every word for every curse. I'll go with short ribs, sheep shanks, or lace leg, a poor girl's milling tune. I think I've forgotten him now. Dear, it's not possible to kill off anything in rumpled words. Not any kind of woodland thing in the linguistic heart, but something still murmurs and roams about in the graveyards of language. Junker, wine screamer, little noise. This was also a translation project. This was um, for the um, Polish Cultural Institute. It was in collaboration with a Polish poet. Um, and she was very involved that year with the announcements by the Polish um, bishops about the fact that the word gender and the word sex were um, the same. Uh, so she, she had trouble with the fact that the Polish bishops, or the Polish, within the Polish Catholic faith there was a statement that it's not translatable that there be any difference between being a woman and being female. It's, that just doesn't, that can't translate into Polish ideology. Um, so this is, um, we wrote a, a number of poems based on this, one of which is a translation. This one is a, it's a translation of an advice, and they, what came out in the same statement was the fact that it's compulsory for Polish women to uh, breastfeed their children. So it's this kind of Catholic statement. You know, one thing is, if you're a woman, you're a woman. The second thing is, you have to breastfeed your children. So we did um, a kind of strange translation, which was directly taken from the instructions on this website, um, which was then um, put through our translator, uh, which well, was translated for me. Um, so these are direct translations. So you'll recognize something like, I will not be the slave of any bottle. That's the, the literal translation of what was written on the Mother's Milk website. Uh, Pajek, do not make fun of the child in the bottle. I am a mother and I don't want to be a mother, singing the calisthenics of my body with the other things, animals and women. They are strangers, you don't know their languages, in contrast to cow's milk or familiar lactose. I will not be the slave of any bottle. We always feed manna to that child from our two marvellous warehouses. 
It's never too early to think about how you're going to start feeding your enemy. <laughs> Unknown inertia of breast and the empty-handed man will be night pain. Arm yourself, animal, strongest in the first hour after birth with its adjustable, unrepeatable, sucking value. And this is a translation of a, a, a poem by the Polish poet Anna Square, which we did collaboratively. Um, I say to my carcass, you carcass, where are your hygienic measures? Where is your pronounceable name? Where is your downward facing dog? Today I had a visit from guests, a visit from weariness with sex ritual, a mocking glance of eternity and disgust which is glossed as a pizzle or a woman's penis in my letter to a team of translators. Ten of the ten elegantly rusted languages warn me with condemnation. Against myself are all books and all civilizations. Against me there is my own heart and the domestication of thousands of years. Against myself, the buttock of a man, the clear, smooth charm of an amoral little animal warm as a small heating plant. The learned cruel virtue of sacrifice, the morphemes of beautiful men, egoism, proprietary centuries. Um, so this is the most gimmicky thing I'm going to do. Um, in fact, I wonder if um, I've finished, sorry, I don't wonder if that could be... Mm -hmm. No, I just wonder if the lights could, the light behind me could go off. Sorry, yeah, 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 if that's possible. Okay, so this is um, this is from a new book um, called uh, Refracted Light: uh, Twenty Poets Respond to Jackson Blow. Um, so it's the International Year of Light this year, um, and as part of this uh, collaboration, we were each asked to, um, I'm not sure if people are familiar with Jackson McClough's light poems. Some people are, some are not. Okay, so um, Jackson McClough created this chart, it's a kind of process-based poetry, so he created this chart in which he uh, wrote, he kind of denoted all these different names for light, so rose light, reflected light, refulgence, resplendence. Um, and then he had different devices like um, playing cards and, and rolling dice by which he would compose a poem which would then move around these different times that he'd set up in his chart for light. Um, he wasn't, it wasn't kind of perfectly followed, so um, it's actually full of mistakes and he's himself written about the fact that he didn't really like following the rules. Um, also relevant is that a number of the poems he states are love poems and uh, a number of the rules for composition are actually hiding coded people's names, so people's names are used to kind of move through the light, so it's a, it's a kind of love poem in absence, just through the kind of shadows cast by the references to the light. Um, in my response, I was thinking more about these kind of tabulations of light. Um, I was looking at George Herbert's A Book of Stars and the whole idea of um, these kind of stargazing tabulated ledgers um, of different kinds of light emblems and configurations of, of light. Um, so one of the lines from George Herbert is, I tire of light and the rings obtained in my ledger. Um, the reason that I have to have this is that this poem, this is an unreadable poem, as many of the poems that I write are unreadable. Um, this is an unreadable poem because it's, a, it's about typography, so it's about asterisks, asterisms. Asterism. Um, and there's no way I can pronounce that. So this light is going to represent the asterisk. Um, so asterism means um, star, a coded pattern of stars from the Greek for star. But it also indicates, traditionally within typography, an asterism is uh, four or three in a row and it indicates a break or absence, but it also calls attention to a missing name or is a signal for name or emblem withheld. So I thought it was a good way to kind of talk about that, like the kind of hidden love poem in Jackson McBow, but also the kind of tabulation of stars and the kind of cosmology of this. Um, the first two sentences are an epigraph, and I'll leave a pause after that so it will become obvious. When the light flashes, that's an asterisk for light. Um. <laughs>
is that the will of the wisp? No, it's the waning of my grief. I was never interested in you turn it on or you turn it off as a subdivision of the event frame. Endure recovery in chance allotment, a drawing of constellations whose templates could not be established in photo, though written in the dark room of loss. Aleatoric and algorithmic, we are never as good a pattern as we should be, with all our available quotas of in an assignment of columns, even to exit and stop. Event metric, you up my life. Every grid of it, a book of stars or naked fixtures. Magellanic cloud, I find you in my almanac of beacons, a radiant alternation version of this document grammar, legitimately inferred from markup languages compared to lunar system B and its eclipse table. Nominological or numerological, from the angle of regret, something has occurred that could be called a event. Will the last person to leave please turn out all of our incandescence functions forever? The denotes my mistakes, a million random digits with 100,000 normal deviates. A grid alone might not accomplish this. Of course we have, without, we could not see each other. There is something lacking in me, hearted and headed. I only mark the days that shine, a nimbus, an alcohol lamp, then more darkness. Xerox, anxiety of the living, may you never prove false, that awakens a drunk, make and break igniter, Lumen for a more efficient nation. The weaker the, the stronger the cold euphoric needed to distinguish yourself in a quality or instance of being lambent, neither deflecting nor shedding upon, but projecting oneself into a galaxy of trifling data. Rise up, shepherd, and follow the starred function. Your name in. <laughs> And um, this is the final poem I'm going to read. This is um, a love poem built entirely from the words of an existing alphabetical first line index. Oh, so it's an index from a book that I own. Um, the Vantage Point, it's a posthumous, it's a published posthumous book of poems. And the Vantage Point afforded by the kind of posthumous positioning um, is I'm trying to use it to tell the story of a love affair or a, a sex affair or whatever, whether with a person or just the kind of looking backwards on life and with hindsight itself. So um, just to explain, I haven't added any words, um, but I've used very few of the words that are there. I have changed the punctuation. I haven't changed whether or not it's in italics, and I haven't added repetitions, so some lines are repeated because of the way that the index works. Um, and I, in some cases, I've utilized that. Um, there's a kind of beginning section, but after that it's alphabetical, and that's kind of interesting because you find the way that like that life kind of gathers itself alphabetically. So in the R's, everybody starts remembering and, and remembering. Um, so it kind of changes the, the tone of, of what it's doing, um, and it's um, it's called Davies thought life was long, which might give you the name of the poet who's the source, which is Iris Thomas, but it kind of changes it out with the kind of religious tone of some of the poems. So this is. Um, Love poem. Actually, this is a sister poem to one that I didn't publish, which was entirely sexual. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, this one is more in, in, in keeping with the kind of nostalgia theme to what I'm reading. I am shapeless and ill. I came on the adder. I fell in love again. I fell with my poem. I grid myself for the Aegon. I have been a student of your love. I have no name. There are nights that are so still, there are sins rural, they keep me sober. This day I am with the beasts, this page should be left blank. 
we are the lost. We have had names. We must reverse our lenses. What I ask of humans, what's that you've got on? When we are weak, we are. Where were you on the night of June 10th? Arg, I thought, alas, all men, or shall we say, my life, an egg with spectacles, an obsession with nothing. And still it goes on, and this one says to me, and this one with his starched lip, and this one writes, and he knows, with the passing of the years, are they happy? Asking love at the end, because we cannot be clever. Bored with it, born too late, in the remotest backwater, but the silence in the mind is its own cold beach, solitary cold hands meeting. Come close, dance for me. Life was long, don't ask me, entered for life, failing. For some there is no future, from meditation on a flower, from my door to hers, from the body at its end, gathering mushrooms by the light of the moon, geriatric. He atones not. He has ears. He is his own. He is that great void. He is that great void. He rationed his intake. He was sometimes a bad boy. They talked foxes, heretics. How far can one trust autumn thoughts? How good of you to come, a lion? Will the lion remain a lion? I, I know fair days. I listen to the echoes. I look up at the sky at night. I look up from my book. I resent the question. I said to her, I think that maybe, I think we have not. I turn now. I want. Help me. Listen. I woke up. I would still go there, in need of that day, language, in the absence of such wings, in the country house, in the dream, in time's telescope, it is always at hand. It is an old story. It is like a tree. It is one of those faces. It is a drenched face. It was always weather. It was an old white friar. It was our last interglacial. It was winter. Its methods were not sweeping. Listen, I have a song. Looking at it, the molecule and the atom, love her now, make my voice sharp. Madness, matrimony, mourners after the shadows, night after night I point my hands, no clouds overhead, no muscle, no need to apologize, eyes running, time a door between us, not a person, not done yet, not the empty tomb, not to worry myself anymore, not without a struggle, nuptials. Oh, he said, I have lived with nothingness, looked back on an evening like this, on the threshold, one day, one headland, one word. Others were brave. Pain's parables I have read. Play me, she said. Promising myself before bedtime, remembering, remembering, repeat. Requests, residues, reflections, resurrections. Revision was in the air. Ruminations, illuminations, rumors of bestiality. Shall we revise the language? She came like a saint. She left me shipwrecked, sick wards, the sailed beds, silence. Space walking always with that clearer than my thoughts. Still going. Temptation. That day after the night death. That was life's mischief. The agitation. The astronauts could not conceal. The body is mine. The bones song towered above the town, growing imperceptibly. The cure of souls, the deception of platforms, the echoes return slow. The furies, the greatest language, the hermits strode forward, the highway ran, the hours were long, the lost, the lost, the moon never sets. The owl calls, the owl has a clock, the pessimist, the piper with the thin lips, the poet scans the stars, the pound floats, the news changes, the pretenses are done with, the problems are never only external, the professor lectures upon Blake. The wrong prayers. 35 years now, this at the bottom. What had been blue shadows? What time is it? 
Where does the town end? Who can read Wittgenstein's signposts? Women blocked for him. Words are drilled. Words, accuse me of sincerity. Words, words are drilled. Wrong. X loves Y. Years are miles to be.